So a bit late to the party, but this is the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. I did a review of the 14 inch a few weeks back, and that alone is a very powerful and performant laptop. But what about the 16 inch base model? Is it better than the 14 inch or is there much difference between the two? Well, in this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts and findings of what the 16 inch base model is like in terms of performance, how it compares to the 14 inch base model, and if it's too big when comparing to my older 2018 MacBook Pro. So just to go over the differences between the 16 inch and the 14 inch, apart from the size difference, the 16 inch base is an extra 500 pounds compared to the 14 inch base model. So what do you get for the extra 500 pounds, I hear you say? Well, you get an additional two CPU cores and two GPU cores. You get a bigger screen, you also get a bigger battery. I suppose you also get a larger trackpad as well. Oh, and you do get a larger charging brick. Aside from that, both share the same fantastic liquid XDR displays. They both have the six speaker setup. They both have the new keyboards. And of course, they both have that wonderful notch. Now with the additional two CPU and two GPU cores, how much performance gain do you really get from the 16 inch? Well, I did this test with the 14 inch model where I had a load of things running in the background whilst I exported the video. I did something similar here with the 16 inch. This time I ran a few more software development tasks in the background just to see how it would cope and how much I can throw at it. I used a piece of software called Docker to download and install uh, some software things like database and services. And still with all that, the 16 inch, just like the 14 inch, handles the task pretty well. There was a slight lag or delay for a very short moment. That was for only a split second. And all in all, the 16 inch kept up just like the 14 inch. So no surprise there really. And in reality, I don't think many people will be doing video editing and installing software at the same time. Maybe you do, who knows, but at least you know that this machine can handle it. But let's talk about some real numbers to put things into perspective. So just like the 14 inch, I did the same software development test on the 16 inch. I built a template iOS app using a framework called React Native. And to recap, the 15 inch took about three minutes and 30 seconds to build, compile, and launch. The 14 inch did it in just over a minute, and the 16 inch, well, did it in 54 seconds. So a little improvement over the 14 inch, it's not massive, but it is something. Then I ran the build again, now that the files were cached, and just like the 14 inch, it just came under 10 seconds. So there are performance gains, but it's not anything significant enough to throw your money at it just for those two extra cores. And not only that, I forgot to mention, with my 14 inch MacBook uh, Pro review, how quick the SSDs are with the file transfers. I copied a folder which has like 388 files. Um, the size of it was about 184 gigs and copying that took just under 15 seconds. So all in all, the 16 inch base model is not too different from the 14 inch base in terms of performance. Now I think where you get your money's worth is that screen, especially if you'd like to have or need to have multiple windows side by side. You can set the desktop to 2056 by 1329, which will give you more space for side-by-side -side apps and more room to have multiple windows in various configurations. Even when you're using a single app or visiting a web page, you can just see how much more you can fit on that screen. And when it's chill out time and you want to watch or catch up on your favorite TV show or watch some YouTube videos, the screen becomes a great entertainment unit paired with its fantastic six speaker setup. And if you're worried that the 16 inch is too big or bigger than the 15 inch, it's actually not that big when you put it side by side. The 16 inch is a bit thicker, but in terms of length and width, it's about five millimeters uh, bigger on either side. There is a weight difference, of course. Uh, the 16 inch is a bit heavier, uh, coming at 2.1 kilos. But when it gives you so much more power and performance and a pretty decent keyboard to type on, plus the additional ports, in my view, it's not a bad compromise. Now I will admit the 16 inch is not cheap, even the base model version. It's well over the 2000 pound or dollar mark. But I will say this, back in 2018, my 15 inch MacBook Pro cost 2,700 pounds. And I think I upgraded the graphics card on that as well. Whereas in 2022 or when these MacBooks were released in 2021, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the base model cost 2,400 pounds. So I'm paying way less, but I'm getting way more. Overall, I'm really impressed with the performance of the 16 inch so far. It's more than capable for my needs as a full-time software engineer and a part-time video editor. 
And if you're still thinking about whether to go with the base or the M1 Max, like I was, in my view, I think the M1 Pro base model is more than enough. Unless you're in that small group where you do need the extra power or you're a professional video editor, or perhaps you want to future-proof it, or if you have the extra cash, then go with the M1 Max. Either way, I think you'll be very pleased and impressed with the new M1 Max. Now, the other dilemma you may have now is what form factor do you go for? Do you go for the 14 inch or the 16 inch? That probably makes sense to talk about that in the next video. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful or entertaining and I'll see you on the next one.